How are you doing this evening? Wonderful, Mr. Little. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing uh, well. I'm just running a few video series here, trying to get caught up and uh, kind of inform people on what teaching and what education during COVID is like right now. So I know that you have been dealing with COVID a lot longer than we as the teachers have been. Um, you know, we basically got sent home in March and then you've still been there working the whole time. So how has COVID affected you on a daily basis right now? Man, it, it has been extremely stressful. It's just been, it's, it's been stressful for all of us having to go in and, you know, and uh, make the school where it's safe for everybody having to go in and lay down, you know, the, the 500 pieces of white tape every six feet, the signs, uh, all the precautions that we've had to take and had to prepare for before the, before the start of school. Uh, nothing about it was typical. You know, typically the emphasis on back to school in the first is in the first three or four weeks of school is is to try to build family and, and try to keep it really fun and light and, and slowly bring the kids uh, back to school. And this year was much different with COVID. We had to start out uh, almost being prison-like and very strict and very structured and trying to make sure all our kids stayed safe, that they wore, wore their mask at all times, that they socially distanced. So instead of the lightheartedness that we're typically have you know we've had to uh, be very serious and very strict in ways and uh, you know it obviously has, has taken a lot of the fun out of school and has created a stress you know COVID has presented enough of a challenge but you've also had the added challenge of moving to a new building as well how how has that process been for you <laughs> that, that added to the challenge uh, obviously this building is much bigger uh, and, you know, instead of the emphasis being on get acquainted with a new building and, and being able to go outside and being able to, to enjoy the benefits of a new high school after being so cramped up, we really have had to restrict the movement of the school and haven't been able to enjoy, you know, having a large lunchroom that we can move around, being able to go outside, being able to play volleyball, just the things that we took for granted for so long. So coming into this new building and really not being able to add that family touch to it that we would normally have been able to, you know, anything that involves close contact, we've had to suspend. So our family groups, all the things that have made us, I feel, a really great school and that family atmosphere uh, has been a real struggle. It would have been a struggle in a smaller building, but with us being so spread out and this building being so large um, you know a lot of times in the course of the day there's students and teachers that I don't even get to see because we are so spread out it, I joke but it really does take it takes me 59 seconds to get from my office to the library that used to take about 10 <laughs> um, so when I when I go somewhere I have to go somewhere with a purpose because it takes a while to get back well you know I uh, got that measuring wheel from from that back office the other day and I measured from that back office to my classroom and it was right out of football field it's, yeah. uh, it's a pretty long hallway I think from end to end it's about uh, 1,475 feet yeah that's different, different pretty lengthy. so if you had to narrow it down what would you say has been the one one thing just one thing that has been the absolute biggest challenge through all of this time building relationships with students you know I've always loved that interaction with students uh, and we've, we've we've lost that because of this the face mask trying to recognize you asked for one i'm sorry i'll give you more than one trying to recognize students i've never soon never known these kids from the nose up so <laughs> get up and talk to you i'm going who are you I, and I, i'm slowly starting to get that you know and the, and the biggest thing my, my heart just breaks for the teachers i know we have great teachers, and I know they care about kids, and they're just struggling right now because, you know, it's just it's a lot on them. So. Well, if you could go back to the beginning of the 2019 school year, what would you tell yourself? Retire. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. Retire. Go. Run. Fast. Man, I, you know, I would tell myself to chill out. Quit you know, relax a little bit, 
it's tough on everybody. Um, the stress has gotten to me. It's gotten to the teachers. Um, you know, we've had to learn to pace ourselves because this is a pace that we've never experienced. So we're all struggling trying to do things we've done. You know, this is my 27th year. No other year compares to this. So in the past, I've known how to pace myself. I've known how to pace the amount of energy I put into stuff. And this has totally, totally thrown me off. And uh, I, I would just tell me myself to, to slow down um, and, and just be more patient. So how do you go about dealing with stress? I know as an administrator, you always have some form of stress in your life. Plan vacations in advance, so I have something to look forward to. Uh, when I go home, uh, you try to turn the phone off, but that's not possible. But um, just uh, try to get away, go home and, and relax. Um, you know, fortunate that I live uh, in the back of a cul-de-sac and I have woods around me and that's where I like to be. So just uh, try to get quiet when I can. Uh, watch sports, which helps, but <laughs> and, and mindless shows that make me laugh. So <laughs> what take away. Is there anything from this school year, even though it's been a huge challenge, has there been anything that you've actually enjoyed from it? Um, you know, in, in some way, I, I've enjoyed the challenges because I've, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think I could be pushed. And I've been forced to do things I thought I couldn't do. And while I've griped about it, um, and it has stressed me in a lot of ways, I've probably grown because of it. And it, it's it's teaching me to be patient. And it's uh, I've always had a sense of humor, but I've really, really had to develop a sense of humor in the past month. And I don't know if it's a sense of humor. I've just gone completely mad. Uh, but I try to find myself laughing at things more than getting upset. So. Um, yeah, that's the way I would probably answer that question. Well, I'm glad you did answer it that way because one of the, I guess, foundational standards in East is student growth. And, you know, when you talk about growth, if you really get down to it, it's uncomfortable. And yeah. the real, I guess, goal of student growth is to get students to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And yeah. as a teacher, I have learned to deal with being uncomfortable during this time because there's been a lot of times we haven't known what's going on there's been times you haven't known what's going on and, and all the way up and everybody's having to make decisions for the first time and nobody really wants to make the wrong decision but right. uh, you know it, that challenge has been fun and you know it's yeah. I've enjoyed it so far for me even though I've, I've had some challenges I haven't maybe handled very well but um it's been a good year so far, even though I think this is the sixth week of school now. And uh, All right. Well, um, is there anything you want to add before I cut out on here? Anything you no, want to I advertise? Just, I just want to assure the parents that we are we're being as safe as we can. Uh, we're not always able to give out the information that they would like to hear. Uh, we're pretty restricted by the laws. And I just, I just want them to know that our teachers are working harder than they've ever worked in their lives. They're working their tails off. Uh, just please be patient with them. Uh, these are challenges that, uh, that they didn't know were coming. And, you know, they're doing the absolute best they can. Just please be patient with us and know that we're doing everything we can to keep their students, uh, their kids, as safe as we possibly can. Um... <laughs> Tell us, as media specialist, how has COVID changed what it is that you do on a day-to-day -day basis now? Okay, so in the library, there are kind of three guidelines that the state uh, gave us uh, before we started back to school. So the first thing is the students, actually anyone, needs to get a hand sanitizer uh, as they come in, and I have stations at both entrances. And that's just ensuring that your hands are clean before coming in and, uh, you know, touching the books or whatever. The second thing we have to do is kind of a biggie, and this has been different. The, the books have, once they're returned, they have to be put under uh, quarantine for the minimum of 72 hours, sealed away to kill uh, the virus. Um, 
for myself, it's just made it easier for me to do um, weekly because I have five tubs that I'm filling the books in. So instead of, I just did it per day, like a Monday tub, Tuesday tub, and so on. That just kept bookkeeping in easier for me. Um, so that's that's been a big, big change. And then a of course, the last thing is for contact tracing. If, like today, I'm doing book talks. And so the students come in and they sign in where they're sitting. And I am able to keep up with that. Um, this library, the new one, is much, much larger, probably three times the size. And so there's several different areas that the kids can sit at. And so there is a clipboard. Um, at each area so that they can sign in for the contact tracing. So what, what's what been the biggest challenge for you this year as the media specialist? The, the biggest thing, and I think this is for a lot of people, is just the disinfecting. Just last week we had a senior class meeting, and so when it was over, of course, we had them all spread out six feet apart, which was easy to do in this new library because it's so large. But there was some massive disinfecting that had to go on after um, after the meeting was over, and so that that's been a challenge for me just because of the amount of space I have. But you know, I'm willing to do that to keep everybody safe from the virus. So, what are you doing to help the needs of our virtual students? So this is a this is a biggie that I. I'm loving that we're doing is I have started a curbside service and not only just books but I've had kids uh, check out the calculators um, for the ACT a couple of weeks ago and they can just drive up in the way our new building is set up there's a sidewalk out so I just we have signage and all of that so that's really helped um, virtual kids I wish more were using it maybe we don't pick up as the year goes on but that's available for them as well. Okay. Now, not only are you the best media specialist in Johnson County, maybe the state, we'll see, <laughs> uh, but you're also a cheer coach. How has uh, COVID affected you as a cheer coach? COVID, as far as cheering, has been a, um, it's a, it's a battle. Um, we, the AAA um, announced early on that we would not be attending away games and so that was hurtful luckily for me i don't have seniors on this year's squad so they were pretty they've been really well you know taking it the news really well a couple of weeks ago they did release us to go to away games and so we're just excited to hit the bus and get on the road next week now do cheerleaders have to wear masks while cheering they do while cheering, but not stunting. So, that's interesting. Okay. Um, do wear me some when they're, when they're stunting, just because we're so close when we do that. Um, it, it's, it, it's, that's a challenge. Yeah, I know in my classroom, my classroom's big enough that I can spread my kids out six feet, but... Mm -hmm. If they're going to work together, they have to be less than six feet. So I just make yeah. them wear masks all the time anyway. Even yeah. though by the guidelines we could take the masks off, I make them wear them all the time anyway. So yeah. Um, is there anything you want to add? Like how? Uh, what can what can people do for you as a media specialist or as a cheer coach to help you out? I I'm more of a giver. I want to help those that need it. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate. I've been healthy and hopefully continue that. So um, just everybody just needs to truck on and let's let's get this virus kicked. Well, I can tell you, it's not all just about health that'll keep you out of quarantine because That's I've yet true. to be sick and this is my second time <laughs> in quarantine. And uh, yeah. I just want to say again, thank you because um, some people may not know, but Miss Cook, as she said, is a giver. Uh, more than she is a receiver, but she um, she has definitely helped us out and delivered us multiple times some groceries, or she even brought us some dish soap one night because we were out of dish soap and we were quarantined. So she is uh, a wonderful person and and better uh, media no 
She's a good media specialist, but an even better person. Let me get that straight. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. And we do appreciate you, and I appreciate you for joining me and letting me interview you. Uh, and hopefully, no hopefully our YouTube video will have like a million hits, and then you'll be the most popular media specialist. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, ma'am.